Welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess and today I'm going to talk about my foul orchid rescue. Now this particular plant is nicknamed Alpha. So to give a quick recap, I had a huge box of orchids that I had received and they had mealybugs and a bunch of other issues that I had to deal with. After the initial process of cleaning them up, um, now it's time to start repotting them. And this is the first plant that I'm going to repot because it has a keiki. So Alpha has about five leaves on the mother plant and three leaves on the keiki, but no roots. So the keiki um, still needs more time before it can be removed. Usually keikis uh, need about three roots that are about three inches long before it can survive on its own. So as for the mother plant, it has about five leaves and it seems to be relatively healthy. Um, Obviously, the entire plant was covered in mealybugs, so I had to clean that up and then remove the media so that they don't have any eggs or larvae hiding in the media. It also gives me a good chance to check on the roots, and in this case, the roots look pretty healthy. And I'm going to be repotting this plant back into sphagnum moss and also its original pot. Um, what I do is I put a pad of moss in the center, wrap the roots over it, and then wrap more moss around the entire root ball. Then I'm gonna put that into the pot itself. And then if I need to add more moss, then I just kind of pack it in to make sure it's snug and secure. Now, when it comes to sphagnum moss, some people are um, more anxious about using them for orchids, but they're actually, it actually works in my particular environment. Here in Southern California, it gets pretty hot and pretty dry and water is a precious resource. Sphagnum moss carries about eight to nine times its weight in water. So sphagnum moss is great for retaining a lot of moisture without using a lot of water. So alpha was grown in sphagnum moss and the roots are adapted to growing in moss. So by keeping the media the same, I'm trying to minimize the transplant shock between um, the plant. The roots don't really adapt well when they change from one media to the next. Sometimes they die off and you gotta wait for new roots to grow. In this particular case, since I'm using moss again, um, I'm hoping that it doesn't, I'm hoping for less root die off and that it will just continue to grow. Um, currently, this plant doesn't have any new growing tips, so that's why I'm sticking with moss so that it has less of a transition for this plant. And hopefully, it will just continue to grow and continue to thrive. A week after the repot, I noticed that the flower spike has started to dry off from the top. And um, I'm gonna keep an eye on it to see if it will travel all the way down and stop the keiki, or if it's just gonna let the keiki grow. Usually, um, the mother plant tries to conserve as much energy as possible um, for itself if it knows that it's gonna survive. Um, but if it knows that it's not gonna survive, then it's gonna push out all of its energy towards the keiki. So I'm just gonna watch to see which of these two plants is gonna make it, and hopefully both do. So we'll end up with two plants by the end of this. So that is a quick recap of what's going on with Alpha. And if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, and follow along as I go through processing all these orchids that are now a rescue mission. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!